Filme gedreht. Kameramann, wie es im Deutschen heißt, und als Director of Photography dann in Amerika. Aber begonnen haben sie beim Fernsehen und der Beginn geht auf einen Film zurück. Sie haben einmal bei Dreharbeiten zugeschaut und das hat sie wenn ich so sagen darf, infiziert. Und say that really kind of almost infected you. Could you tell us about that? Well, yes, of course I could. That was Lola Montez. And of course it was Max Ophuls who was the director. He was one of the most famous and greatest um, Directors of this time, and uh, he was then forced to leave Germany because of the Nazis. Uh, came back to Germany afterwards, um, and uh, filmed Lola Montez at the Bavaria in Munich. My father knew him from Berlin, so we met up in Bamberg, and he asked him, "Couldn't my son watch the filming of Lola Montez?" And he said, "Yes, of course." So I went to Munich, and then Marcel, his son. And then uh, welcomed me there, greeted me there, and I was able to go to the sound studio there and could see what they had built there. Um, and in fact, it was the circus scene, and it was fascinating to me. And of course, I wanted to meet Max Ophuls. I did so, and I saw the way he worked. And the DP was Christian Montras. Um, you're right, I'm very bad with names, but I will never forget that one because he impressed me so much. And so greatly. And when we spoke, and Max Ophel together with Christian Montras, that when they spoke to each other and planned the uh, next scenes and how they were to be shot, and of course, and the actors came into the mix, it was they were fantastic scenes and fantastic actors and actresses. I was fascinated by the atmosphere. I had grown up in the theater, so I, I knew that business quite well. And also I'd photographed, um, um, I'd enjoyed photography quite a lot as a young person photographing and the, combining the two, photographs, and photography and theater, the two of them, I thought, this is it. Well, that didn't help you in your first uh, meeting with, uh, with Fassbinder. He was not convinced that uh, Fassbinder Ballhaus, that this could be really would be such a long-running story. No, he didn't have that feeling at all. And to be honest, I didn't either. I was not his first choice um, as a DP. Um, he, I won't remember name the, the first choice, but actually um, Uli Lommel, who was actually the producer, he sent me there, and he, he, I mean, he wanted to have me there, and that, that warm reception I got was from him. And then, of course, there were interesting discussions and debates, the motifs that we looked at, and then they were fantastic. And I thought, well, this is great. And this, we could sell. We could, we could sell this scenery. And he said, well, and then he answered, what do you want to sell? Yeah. Um, he was very strict about the language and the way people used used language. I hadn't even you know, unpacked my su suitcase, really, to be honest, because I didn't think it was going to last. But then it did last a little bit longer. And at the beginning, he tried to give me very difficult jobs, and um, he was waiting for me to say, oh, that's not going to work, it's too difficult, but I never said that, because I knew if anything that you can imagine, it can be done, it could be difficult, but it, we somehow made it happen, a good team, a great team, in fact, a Spanish team, and Things got better over time, but at the so beginning in particular, things were pretty difficult. And, and then, in perhaps a more coincidental USA. way, you yeah. then came to the das United States. Yes, it really ich was a coincidence. <laughs> I only just finished with uh, Fassbinder, and Peter Lilienthal called me up and said, I'm doing a film in New York. Can we do it together? And I said, of course we can. And one day... A very corpulent person um, stood at his door. 
And in, he also had, um, he, all of a sudden, we had uh, some, some men sitting there, big, burly men um, with weapons, and they asked whether we had a permit to, uh, to film. And we said, no, we didn't. And they said, well, you can't then uh, film, you can't shoot anymore. So we ran to Joe and said, what are we going to do? And he said, wait a minute, I'll call someone. And he had a friend who happened to be in jail but still had the power to arrange things so that the next day another few burly men with guns were standing in the doorway and had a conversation with these other men. And uh, they then um, had uh, a, a talk, and they, in fact, these, these protect us, these men protect us from the others. So this is how it works. This is how things work in America. And that was pretty impressive. Says he hadn't um, then shot a film for about five years, and that film was very expensive, but not particularly expensive, the last one. And he had um, a, a shot list, and it was quite ambitious, yeah, drawn up. And, gefragt, yeah, and, and, he asked me, and he asked himself, who's going to gesagt, be able to, to do this? And um, someone said, well, ask Ballhaus, and he did. And of course, me, for me, it was a dream to be able to work with him. But the producer said, well, you have a list of about 150 different shots, and you only have what, four nights. And of course, we only have a budget of four million. Sie zu Marty und hat gesagt, and ja, und? then they talked to Martin and said, Marty and said, how, how are you going to do that? Well, und you're going to have to ask Michael Bauhaus. So I ich kann approached das. him and said, I can do it. I did this with Fassbinder and you've seen those um, films. You've seen my films. Und dann sagt, ich gefragt, ja, so I asked, kannst du das auch? so und I said, can you do it? Can we both? And he asked me, could, could I do it? And I said, well, let's do it. Let's try and do it. So he had a camper van a little bit further away, and when he went to the camper, um, and I came up to him and said, it's, it's all done. And he didn't even actually manage to get to the, the camper there. We, we, never, we never got to that point. We actually managed it every single shot, every scene he wanted to have. He, we made it happen, and it was a completely new experience for him. He didn't know anything like that, that people um, were, were opening up and widening things up, um, just for example, with four or five different scenes of lighting on the sides um, in, um, on a street shot, how that was going to work. And of course, um, he really sweat blood, sweat and tears. And also the depth of field here as well were about two to three um, centimeters. And you know what that means. An American camera DP probably wouldn't have been uh, courageous enough to do that under those conditions. Um, and also these individual scenes as well. Um, the, he had a good DP um, beforehand. Um, they had perhaps five, but we'd done 15 in the same time. What is your favorite shot of all the shots we've done? My favorite shot, I can tell you, is one from the film Goodfellas. Goodfellas. And that's one as uh, doesn't have nicht any words, kann. no dialogue, doesn't need it, um, and it's quite a well-known one. In die, wo eine Kamera in die Copa it's a shot where the camera goes into the Copa Cabana, through the kitchen, geht, into uh, the, uh, the gas seating area where um, the event is taking place. Ist, wird ein Tisch and und you're very active, your, your attention is, is quite Mensch, quickly drawn der, der to that. This person who is then entering the room um, is um, also then very much respected by the people in the room. You can see that in their faces. This is not uh, just a simple person, this is someone special. Usually these are mafiosi, but this young man is entering this arena. Um, and his girlfriend, who is about to become his girlfriend, but she's just uh, completely uh, shocked and impressed by this, um, by him coming in, and she says, what are you doing? And he says, I don't remember what he says, 
in construction. I'm in construction, ja. He says, I'm in construction. Und dann äh, sagt sie, ja, aber deine Hände sehen da nicht so And aus. And she replies, but your hands don't look like it. Union delegate. And he says, I'm ja, a union delegate. Und And she was completely fascinated by him. And he convinced her um, that he's something special indeed. What does that feel like? How do you feel um, ahead of this great gala this evening? Well, thank you very much. I feel really great. This is a great honor for me because the Berlinale in my, the course of my life, right from the day well, it started, uh, the summer before it, I um, was very happy to be a part of it. A lot of people came to Berlin. We had good talks. We had great films that you could watch. Watch. And whenever possible, I would make it to the Berlin Film, Film Festival, and this is really a crowning uh, glory of this long love story to the Berlinale, and I'm so happy about this. This is a particularly important prize for me personally.